Welcome to NG Classes YouTube channel. In this video, we'll consider an example on properties of system. Here, the system being considered is y of t is equal to e to the power x of t. So this is the system. And the task here is to determine is this system linear, time invariant, memoryless, causal and stable. So to test all these properties, first we'll consider the linearity property. So we'll test is this system linear or not. The linearity property says that any system is said to be linear if it satisfies the properties of superposition and homogeneity. So to consider that, what we do is we'll consider at least two inputs. So let x1 of t and x2 of t be the two inputs. So I'll scale the input x1 of t by a factor a1 and similarly I'll scale x2 of t by a factor a2. So I'll add these two inputs, scaled inputs and later I'll give this to a system of operator h so that I'll get the output. I'll call it as y1 of t. So to understand what the system operator h is, so first what we do is we'll consider the system and we'll try to understand what the system does. So I'll say x of t is the input and h is the system property, uh, the operator. The operator h is the operator and y of t is the output. So what is y of t equal to? It is e to the power x of t. Then I can say what the system operator h is. The system operator h is, in this case it is exponential. So whatever I feed in, it gets me the exponential version of that input. So that is the nature of the system. That is how the system behaves. If I feed in x of t, I would get e to the power x of t. Now, if I feed the system with a1 x1 of t plus a2 x2 of t, so what must be my output? It is exponential of that input, which is a1 x1 of t plus a2 x2 of t. So this will be my output. So this is how the system behaves. So this is what I get in the first half. So next what I consider is, I'll consider the input x1 of t. So I'll give it directly to the system of operator h so that I'll get the output. I call it as y dash of t. So what do I get now? I'll get it as exponential of that input. So I'll get e to the power x1 of t. So later I have to scale this by a1. So I get this after scaling. So I'll write that. Similarly, so next what I do is I'll consider another input x2 of t. I'll give this to a system of operator h so that I'll get the output y double dash of t. So what is this equal to? It is equal to e to the power x2 of t. So later I'll scale this by a factor a2. So I'll get the output as a2 e to the power x2 of t. So this is done after scaling. So this is what I'm getting y double dash of t. So next what I do is I'll add these two things. So that means y2 of t is equal to y dash of t plus y double dash of t. So which is equal to a1 e to the power x1 of t plus a2 e to the power x2 of t. So this is what I'm getting as y2. The task here is to determine is the system linear or not. To test it, what I should consider is I have to check is my output, first output y1 of t, is it equal to the second output y2 of t. So if I consider these two, if I compare these two expressions as they are not equal, I would say the system is non-linear. So that is about linearity. So next what we do is we'll consider the second property, time invariance. So I'll write that, time invariance. So now I need to test the system for time invariance. So time invariance st states that a system is said to be time invariant if a shift in the input leads to an identical time shift in the output. So such systems are time invariant systems. That means the output doesn't vary with the time. It remains constant. So to test it, what I do is I'll consider the first half of the statement, whatever I said. So I'll consider 
a shift in the input. So input is x of t, shift in the input is x of t minus t naught. So I'll consider this and I'll give this to the system of operator h so that I'll get the output as y of t. So what is y of t equal to now? So the output depends on the nature of the system. The nature of the system here is to give the exponential version of the input. So input is x of t minus t naught. So I must get the output as e to the power x of t minus t naught. So this is what I get in the first half. Second half, I'll consider a shift in the output. So output is y of t. Shift in the output means it must be y of t minus t naught. So what is this equal to? To get this, so I'll simply consider the expression y of t is equal to e to the power x of t. So this is what I have. From this I want to get y of t minus t naught. So this I can get it by replacing every t with t minus t naught. So it is equal to e to the power x of, so I have to replace t with t minus t naught. So this is what I get in the second half. So next I need to compare is my output, first output y of t equal to y of t minus t naught. So I need to compare. So as I can compare these two and I can say that both are equal. Hence, I would say the system is time invariant. So output is not varying with the time. It is constant. Hence, I would say it is time invariant. So moving on to the third property, which is to test the system for memoryless. So I would say that a system has memory if the output at any given time depends on the input the input on the input of uh, past or the future values. Such a system has the memory. Other way around, in contrast to that, a system is said to be memoryless if the output at any given time depends on the input at that point only. So to understand that, so it is y of t equal to e to the power x of t. Say for example, I want to find the value at 1 y of y of 1 equal to e to the power x of 1. So output at time 1 depends on input at that time only. So it is not depending on past values or the future values. It is depending on the present value of the input. Hence I would say the system is memoryless. It doesn't have any memory. I hope I hope it is fine. So next I would consider the fourth property which is to test for causality. So I would say that the system is said to be causal if the output at any given time depends on the values of the input which are uh, present or the past values but it should never depend on future values of the input. So if the output depends on future values of the input I would say the system is non-causal. Very clear. So for causality the output can depend on present value of the input or the past value. So I am writing the same thing, present value of the input or the past value of the inputs. If this is the case, I would say the system is causal. So considering the present system which is y of t is equal to e to the power x of t. So output depends on the input, present value of the input. Here it neither depends on uh, past or future. So here I am testing for is it depending on any of the future values. As the answer is no, I would say the system is causal. System is causal. So we'll move on and I will consider the last property that is stability. So I would say that the given system is stable, that is BBO stable, bounded input, bounded output stable. If by making the input finite, I must get a finite output. A bounded input must result in a bounded output. If that is the case, I would say the system is stable or else it is not. So first what I do is I'll consider the input x of t. I'll consider the magnitude of this. I'll make this finite. For that what I do is I'll make this less than or equal to mx where mx is any finite positive value. So it must be less than infinity. So what is my output? Output is y of t. So what is that? I'm going to get now depending on the nature of the system it is e to the power x of t. So is this less than infinity that is the question. 
if yes the system is stable so understand is what i do is i consider any positive finite number any positive finite number so next how does the system behave it is exponential of that number is that a is that also a finite number the answer is yes consider any finite positive number exponential of that finite positive number is also a finite number hence i would say the system is stable so this is all about the five properties of the system y of t is equal to e to the power x of t just to brief it up i have tested this system for linearity and i got this system as non linear and i have tested this for time invariance i got the answer as time invariant and i have tested this for memoryless i got the answer yes the system is memoryless and i have tested this for causality i got the answer yes the system is causal and lastly i have tested this system for stability and i got the answer yes the system is stable this is all about the properties of system thanks for watching